In lesson five, we're going to cover some things I think are really quite essential. There's some of my tips for when I first start a project. There's things that just always go wrong for me later in the project if I don't set it up correctly in the first place. So you know, you've opened a blank file, you've got nothing on it yet, but there's some really important things that you should really do if you're especially if you work in the UK and you don't want to work with imperial settings. Um, if you don't set them up correctly in the first place, you can become unhinged later on. So uh, pay attention to some of these settings and see if they, if they can help you in your processes. Okay, this is lesson five. Uh, it's on user interface, setting preferences, units and snaps. So the first thing I wanted to do is just to cover the, um, uh, the setting up, up of our uh, units and our measurements. So you may notice that to start with, everything is in feet and inches, which if you are from the US side of the Atlantic is probably how you like to do things. But where I'm from, we prefer things in, uh, in, in metric. So uh, I'm going to work in metric. I'm sorry if that's not your, <laughs> not your style, but just so you understand where it is. Down here, it says we're working in Imperial. But double click on it, it swaps it to metric. Double click it back, back to Imperial. So I'm going to leave that set to metric. Um, I'm also able to click on Ortho down here, which will lock my views. Um, so that, sorry, not my view, it will lock the direction that I can draw in, which is the same as clicking on the X and the Y axis up here. It does the same job. Same thing with snap. I've got a double click to snap. And you can see it's just turning on and off snap tool there for assembly snap. I can also do a grid snap. Turn it on and off. So I can start to build up what sort of snaps I like and then I can just quickly clear it all, load it all again. Uh, for myself, I, I quite like having grid snap on for some things um, or maybe a, a point snap or end point snap so I can click to the end of lines. Um, I certainly don't like assembly snap. I never use that, so I'm going to turn it off. Uh, so that's units uh, and snaps. Now there are more places to change those. If we go into options and document options, in here we have places where we can set more uh, more features to do with the um, the document we're working on. So it's quite nice to fill out some of the, uh, the tools here. So I've got my name. So when I uh, someone else comes to use this document in the future, they can see that I created it and it was on this date and it's been modified subsequently by someone else. I can fill out production team information. Uh, there's a lot of people that you think you might need on the show. Um, but this, this could be useful when you come to do paperwork later on, uh, because if you've already got this filled out, you just say, I'd like to um, include the details of the, uh, the chief technician and the, and the programmer, and their details are already in the, the database, so it, it sort of pops up in the, uh, in, in the paperwork. Regional settings, uh, it's automatically sent to, to Canada and Toronto, because that's where WYSIWYG are, that's their home. Um, now, I could set this uh, to London, where I am, but really it's not necessary unless you're doing um, unless you're doing daylight studies and sunlight studies, the idea is, is that by putting this information in, it tells me at what time of the day, the um, so particular times of the day, what what the position of the sun would be, which you know might be useful. Uh, but if you're doing sunlight studies, you're probably not using the right software. No offense to WYSIWYG, but there's you know there's other tools out there for doing sunlight studies. Um, it could be useful if you're trying to work out on a tour, a festival, or an outdoor outdoor gig, what time the sun would set, and trying to get a view of that, you know, with your lighting. But you can do that with Google Earth as well. So, you know, it's yeah, you know, it's there if you need it. In general, we just have a few options here to change uh, the way we use ob objects. Um, but I'm going to jump down to draw defaults. This is more important. This is where we can change from metric back to imperial again, and change the position. You know, we like to work in millimeters. Uh, we can change the way things look. Background color is quite handy. I could change this to like a dark blue. When I click OK, background changes to be blue if you like blue. I'm just going to go back in there again, change it back to black because I don't like it to be blue. Uh, not here anyway. I'll show you later on where I like things to be blue. Um, this one here is quite useful. Now I said about doing the grid snap. I, I find the grid snap quite useful because we like to lock our lights to within say half a meter. It's automatically set 0 0.6096 meters as a interval snap. That's because that's two feet if you're working in Imperial. So when I'm metric, I like to set this to 0.5. I like to set the angle to five and the origin stays zero, zero, zero. I'll explain the origin in a moment. I'm not gonna go through the rest of these quite yet. We're gonna cover these later on. So come back to black again. Ah, hang on, and I shouldn't have changed the angle. It's now made my cross, you see my crosshairs are now gone that funny direction. That is something I just want to do 
when uh, I need to do something in a funny direction. So I leave it at zero, and if I need to draw at a, um, a line in a certain direction, I can set my, my coordinates to spin by you know, 7.2 degrees, so I can draw in that direction. So yeah, ignore that, leave it at zero. Okay, so that's, uh, that's some of the preferences. I just want also to show you the other window we have for preferences, there's application options. Uh, this is where you can set, for instance, your auto save time. It automatically um, will save to a, a location that you can set. Uh, you can enable it during live mode. It's very annoying because pe people are working, uh, trying to focus a light, suddenly it pauses. I, I've had some projects that can be you know, quite large and it could take a good minute or so to do an auto save. So I actually set this to about 30 minutes uh, when I'm working. Right, so so once, the, once the project's finished, 30 minutes is fine. Before that, uh, 10 minutes is good because if you make a mistake or you lose your file, you only lose 10 minutes worth of work uh, and keep the backup files. Uh, compressor files is uh, is good because it saves on space on your storage and it makes it quicker to, to load. And I always have this on, save external textures within the document. What this means is that if you've imported a, a model with some textures on it, and we're going to cover that later, it will make sure that they stay uh, with the document. So if you move the actual file, the WYSIWYG file, to someone else on a memory stick, the textures will go with it. If you have it ticked off, those textures will be referenced from wherever they're saved. And when you move the file, it will just try looking for them and won't be able to find them. Unless they're you know, on the same server and you've got a, you know, a, a file path which it, both computers can see. But it's safer to keep that on. It does make the file really big, but you know, we're talking about you know, 100 megabytes or so. It's not, it's not you know, going to break, uh, break the computer. Uh, and if you uh, like such things, you can set WYSIWYG so it'll automatically reload the last document that you had open when it starts. Uh, I used to have this on all the time because it's quite handy for people um, who don't know really how to use WYSIWYG. They just have to click on the icon and it would automatically load up our default lighting rig. But actually it takes so much time to do it, it's just easy to leave it off. Uh, and hatch pattern we can set to metric because we like metric. Toolbars, which ones do you want on and off? As I showed you earlier, we can right click on the toolbars to, to bring these libraries up. Simulation will make more sense later on when we start working in uh, the shaded view. Additional interfaces, if you uh, want to use a tape printer, this is uh, quite a funny little tool, which uh, I don't even know where you get them from now, but the idea is, is that once you've done your, uh, your bar, you can print a tape, which will be the length of your bar, and it will have on it all the details about what light goes where. So there'll be a little a mark or symbol that says, you know, this is a, a light, this is a channel, it's address. Um, and you, know, you can configure some of your IP addresses in here, but you shouldn't need to. It should just automatically lock onto the IP address that, that you're using. Um, so here I've got, I've got three different IP addresses. Uh, so it's quite a good way to you know, sort of in, uh, force an IP address on, a, on the WYSIWYG if it can't see something. But again, we'll come to that later. And the same for ETCNet2. I don't know if anyone still uses ETCNet2, but you might use CRTP for images. Uh, the settings for all those are in here. And file locations, you know, this is where your default savings are, default, you know, recovery folders, backup files, all of that, you know, saved here. But I actually leave, leave all this on the defaults because I save my file uh, to a, uh, a, a server where I keep my, my actual project file. You know, this is just the default location, you know, if you end up not saving. If you just hit save without choosing a location, this is where it will go to. So that's the end of settings and preferences and units and snaps.